Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. We're still discussing the current electricity price hikes. It's uh, possibly coming into effect uh, this month if it gets the nod from the PUCSL. People are asking uh, whether this is fair for them because this year alone, soon after the economic crisis hit, this nation, taxes were um, increased, prices of everything skyrocketed, inflation was hammering us. And the rupee crashed. Along with that, the whole economy came tumbling now, down. Now we have to fix this. And the people of this country have been asked by our leaders to pitch in. Not very much sure as to how much the leaders are pitching in, but definitely we have been asked to take the brunt of it all. Now with regard to the electricity price hike, it is done to make the CEB healthy and profitable and to ensure that power will be provided to the people uninterruptedly. Or is it a ploy to cover the losses and bring the CEB to a state where the government can sell it? Joining me now is the former Minister of Energy, Uday Gambampila, parliamentarian. Thank you very much for joining, joining me. Th uh, really good to see you once again. Now, uh, parliamentarian, the currently proposed price hike is, uh, I think, around 60% at the beginning of this year and uh, an additional 40% at the end of the year. Is this fair for the people? Not at all, Mahesh. That's why we are criticizing this, because, as we know, government will have to incur additional cost to generate electricity during the wet, uh, uh, dry season of the wet zone, that is from January to mid-April. So, during this period, uh, water levels of reservoirs will go down. As a result, government will have to more depend on the thermal power generation for which we need to purchase petroleum products. But we have a viable alternative for this problem rather than uh, increases the uh, electricity tariff. As you we know, our peak demand for electricity comes from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., not during the daytime. It means our peak demand comes from not from the industry but from the households. We can introduce battery back rooftop uh, solar panels to meet this demand. In fact, solar panel importers have already imported in excess uh, to meet this demand, but people don't have money to purchase. So, government can introduce an interest free loan even if the government print currency and give a grant to the people, to especially middle class, the middle class houses, hotels and offices start using solar panels. We can reduce the demand for electricity uh, from the grid. As a result, then we can manage without increasing the uh, tariffs. So there is a viable alternative. That's why we criticize the government for this tariff hike. Parliamentarian, now if you remember, the energy crisis uh, is the factor that led to the president that you all supported being chased away from office. Do you think this unbearable price hike, which would cripple the economy of Sri Lankan households along with the SME sector, would result in another unrest? Of course, yes. We should not forget that one side. Uh, uh, prices of the everything has gone up. By, by last month, Sri Lanka had recorded fourth highest inflation rate in the entire world. So people can't afford food, medicine and other essentials at this moment. Uh, people have to face another round of price hike of electricity. Uh, then on the other hand, if you look at the SME sector, Sri Lanka's cost of production has gone up because of the disruptions in the last year, our uh, buyers are moving to other alternative destinations. In this backdrop, if there is another 60% uh, price hike, of course, our SMEs will not be able to uh, compete and they will have to shut down their factories, resulting in more and more unemployment. On the other hand, when big industries will move to other cheaper destinations where they can purchase energy at a cheaper rate. So, 
towards the mid of this year, we will face a huge unemployment and unbearable cost of living, which may trigger another round of uh, riots. Well, um, I do understand what you're trying to say. Parliamentarian, very quickly, you are part of a new alliance, which is the Freedom People's Alliance. When we look at the people who are in this alliance, they're mostly the people who were in power for quite some time. Now, what is the point of this alliance and why should people be serious about what you have to say, let alone vote for you? Firstly, we have experience in coping with this kind of challenges. You know, some people have innovative ideas uh, and they claim they have been, uh, they have never involved in the, uh, governors, this, we, are in un, we are in an unprecedented economic political crisis where experience is crucial. So we, we, we have the required experience. On the other hand, in respective governments in the past, whenever governments were about to make blunders, when they were anti-national and when they are going to have corrupt practices, we are the one who kept voice, raising our voices against it. That's why we had to um, sacrifice our ministerial portfolios. We were expelled from the government not for corruption, not for malpractices, but for voicing for the people and voicing against the corruption, blunders and malpractices. So our, we have a track record of being with the people, voicing for the people, and we have always come out of it innovative ideas to solve the problems. Unfortunately, our previous leaders had no interest in solving people's problems. That's why we never had the opportunity of implementing what we believe in. That's why without going after so-called leaders, uh, uh, power families, power groups, we are going to stand our own alone with the people for the betterment of the people and our uh, beloved motherland. All right, Parliamentarian, thank you very much. Uh, that was former Minister of Energy, Ulega Manpilla. We'll take a short commercial break. Back in a moment.